Priya Khan, and I'm sitting here today with Samantha Levine Finley, and we're going to talk about her experience at IPAR as a master's student. Um, so, Samantha, when did you uh, join IPAR? I started at IPAR in May, in August of 2006. Okay. And what brought you to join uh, the conflict resolution and analysis field? Well, you know, I've been a journalist for about 10 years, um, and I was really thinking a lot about what I was doing um, with my career and whether or not I was really as um, making as much of a contribution as I wanted to be making. Okay. So as I was thinking about maybe how I could transition into something else, um, I met somebody who did mediation and I didn't really know much about it but when I learned about it I was really excited and did some research to find out what sort of academic programs were in the area here in uh, the Washington area and found ICAR. And once I read about it, I was really intrigued. Okay. And um, so, like, what exactly did you want to get more involved in that journalism couldn't really let you do, per se? Right. It was interesting. So when I was, uh, the last job that I had before coming back to school mm -hmm. was um, working on Capitol Hill, uh, covering the um, congressional delegation from a certain state. Mm -hmm. And it was a really sort of bitter time in Congress and in mm -hmm. politics. And I was involved in, you know, covering a lot of stories where people were just treating each other really badly. Okay. And it was getting frustrating because I was covering it, but there was nothing I could do to change it. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't think that um, people needed to communicate that way or deal with each other that way. So I was really looking for something where I could use the skills that I had as a reporter, um, mm -hmm. you know, where I'm you know, used to you know, building trust with people and, and interviewing people and trying to figure out what makes them tick and trying to understand situations and organizations and analyze a lot of information. But once I was able to do that, then be in a more active role mm -hmm. to try to um, help support better communication and better interpersonal relationships. Okay, great. Um, so what was your focus when you came to that? Well, I didn't know what mm -hmm. my focus was. Um, actually, the first thing that I did is, while I was still working, I took uh, 501, the introductory class, as a non-degree student, and that was some advice that I got here um, from a former coordinator who said, see how you like it, and then if it works for you, then you know you could enroll as a student. So I took 501 and loved it, um, and then I kept on working until I came back to school and I went to school full time. So I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. I knew that I was interested in organizational conflict, uh -huh. sort of interpersonal conflict, um, but I didn't really know exactly how I was going to shape that into a career. Okay, I see what you're saying. So when you came to ICA, you weren't exactly sure what the field was like? Or is that...? Yeah, well, I didn't know all the options. Uh -huh. You know, I, I knew that there would be a place for me somewhere, but um, it was through talking to faculty members about my interests that they were able to help guide me in a specific direction and introduce me to some um, jobs and, and careers that I didn't really know existed. Okay, great. And so um, from that, what do you think were the most important skills that you, and the tool set, tool, I'm sorry, tool set that you built from um, your master's degree? So when I came into iCart, I had already had a pretty full career. Uh -huh. um, I had always worked, so I, I had done a lot of things, but the way that I envisioned um, this next stage in my um, sort of you know long career was that I needed to um, create a set of experiences and skills that would allow me to be employable upon graduation. So I really sought out a combination of theory classes as well as virtually all the skill-based classes that I could take here at ICAR. Uh -huh. So that meant that knowing the kinds of things I wanted to do, I took facilitation skills, negotiation skills, I became certified as a mediator through the Northern Virginia Mediation Service, okay. and then I was taking the um, theory classes, so that way I was learning the, um, the literature and the, the context for the work and then applying it um, in practical settings as often as possible. Okay, so um, like, what were the first uh, types of settings that you found yourself applying your skills in? So I started the mediation training as, as early as possible, mm -hmm. and in that way I was able to take some of the things that I learned, for example, in 713, which mm -hmm. is a class where you get to start to practice some um, mediation facilitation skills. And I was doing mediations in small claims court in the area, so I was able to actually sit down with real people having real conflicts 
and try to work with them through their issues and think about the theory that I learned um, in the classes and, and what of that would help me in my workings with actual individuals in the real world. Okay, great. So, um, okay, so after you get, got your degree and you mm -hmm. sort of found these mediation skills, what did you find yourself wanting to get involved in? Like, what was the type of job you were looking for? So, you know, being a reporter, I'm not shy about asking questions. Mm -hmm. So actually what I did is that on the, um, the very beginning of my time at ICAR, uh, at actually the welcome picnic, that I went to, I approached uh, the then the director of the program and told her what I was interested in. And she already had some ideas for people that I should reach out to in the area who do that work. So that's what I did. And actually I got an internship um, in between my first and second year, mm -hmm. um, which was fantastic. And actually um, that ultimately turned into a job after I graduated. Oh, really? So it was really an evolution um, of to realizing what I wanted to do. The other things that I did while I was here at ICAR is I took advantage of being in the Washington DC area where there's really a lot going on in the conflict resolution field. Mm -hmm. So I volunteered to work for um, public dialogue projects. I volunteered to help with a, a peer mediation training program on the Fairfax campus. Mm -hmm. I pretty much took advantage of any opportunity I could to get as much practical experience as possible. To then decide what you actually were most interested in. Yeah, it helped to determine that really focusing on organizational and more specifically workplace mm -hmm. conflict resolution was what I wanted to do. And what was great about ICAR classes is that the class will be on a specific topic, but then when it comes time to say write a paper, mm -hmm. you can apply that material to whatever it is that you're interested in. So I could take a class on identity or on other theories of conflict resolution and apply it to labor relations, or workplace conflict, organizational dynamics. When other people in the room might be writing about Israel-Palestine or the Horn of Africa, um, you know, they could do that and I could write about the things that interested me the most. And we could all do that, you know, really using the same material as a platform. Were there any classes that uh, directly relate to what you do now? So when I think about the skills-based classes, for example, those really have a direct relationship to the work that I do now. Mm -hmm. So in my negotiation skills class, I learned about um, the different ways to approach a negotiation um, and ways to present your position, um, but at the same time seek really an integrative solution to the, the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, sort of that classic, you know, win-win versus win-lose situation. Mm -hmm. Because it was a negotiation skills class in the context of a conflict resolution program, as opposed to say in the context of maybe an MBA program mm -hmm. or a law program, you know, the goal is really to find a way to solve the other person's problem while you're solving your own. Mm -hmm. You know, the goal isn't to win, or to get what you want at somebody else's expense. And in the work that I do as a mediator, that's critical. Mm -hmm. You know, how can you create or craft some sort of um, new resolution that maybe even hasn't been thought of before that is able to encompass what everybody needs? And it doesn't mean that everybody's going to get everything they want, but maybe there's more of a chance they'll get more of what they want than if they'd gone into it thinking, if I get something, the other person can't. Or if the mm -hmm. other person gets something, it means I lose. So I found that class really interesting. And, and the other class that I would mention as a skill class was the facilitation skills class that I took. And that was a weekend class. Mm -hmm. And there I learned a lot about how to work with people to design a program that helps them to reach their goals. For example, if there's a, an office or a department that wants to design a strategic plan, mm -hmm. you know, you can either sort of just go into a meeting room and hope for the best, but a lot of times those meetings are pretty unproductive, mm -hmm. or you can be really thoughtful about designing processes that help them reach that goal. So I think about that class a lot when I'm working with groups now, when they have a goal but they don't know how they're going to really get there, what are the steps they need to take. So I use that a lot too in my work. 
Um, so do, do you think that facilitation, like these methods of facilitation that you've learned from ICAR, are those sort of new in the workplace? Like, you mean are they, have they been, are they innovative or novel in the workplace? Yeah. So they're not, it's not so much that they're innovative, it's that they're often not used. You know, okay. people... So it is mostly just like the, the meeting room that's used to like, when there's workplace issues, they mostly go to the meeting room before this facilitation. Well, a lot of times people have a meeting. They say, we have this problem we have to solve, or we have this goal we need to meet. Let's have a meeting about it. But a lot of people have been in those meetings, and after a couple of hours, sometimes you're nowhere closer to where you needed to be, and a lot of what was discussed doesn't get captured. And it sort of floats off, and there's not a lot of progress made. Mm -hmm. So when you have somebody who has skills in facilitation or if you can bring in somebody who can serve as a facilitator, it's more likely that there's going to be more of a structure around what needs to be done so that way you know, you, you, you know the path that you're on and the, the road you're going to take to get where you need to be. There's, mm -hmm. there's a, a method to the madness, so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, so by learning those skills, I can serve in that capacity for groups that have a goal but need somebody to come in and help manage that communication, you know, make sure there's participation from all involved, mm -hmm. make sure important questions are answered, make sure people feel comfortable being able to raise issues and discuss them and sort of create a space where that sort of dialogue is possible. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things that a facilitator can do. Okay, so it sounds like a far more personal approach in the business place than say like a meeting with um, the manager just to talk out issues. It sounds a little bit more like you think about each person's role in the facilitation. Yes, yeah, so when you're gathering a group together for, for a facilitation, there's a lot of um, preparation and that's one of the things that make facilitated meetings sometimes more productive than meetings that aren't facilitated. Okay. Because you're going into it with an idea of um, sort of things that link together, you know, point A to point B to point C. Mm -hmm. You know, there's um, a design in mind. And there's different um, techniques you can use to help groups to um, brainstorm creative ideas, mm -hmm. prioritize the ones they think are the most important, and then jointly design next steps to how to implement them. Okay. So that's something that I learned starting here at ICAR that I've you know, developed and built on since, um, but the, you know, the foundation was, was through this program. Okay, so that leads me to my next question. So you would uh, agree with me when I say that um, an ICAR master's really is like an interdisciplinary uh, degree. Like you have to learn how to understand different um, studies, like from sociology to psychology, group psychology, and then along with that, your mediation skills. I think that the, the best thing about the program here is that it's really not overly prescriptive. It doesn't limit you in what you can do. Um, there are core required classes, which I think are really important, but then you have the opportunity to really build a program that um, is compelling to you and that helps you to achieve your goals. So for me, that was a program that had a lot of skills-based work in it. But for other people who maybe are interested in research, they can focus more on um, some of the more theoretical classes or really get deep into research methodologies that are going to be useful for them if, say, they want to go into academia, for example. So, you know, what I liked about this program is that it's as interdisciplinary, it's interdisciplinary by function of the fact that conflict resolution draws on so many fields. Um, it is itself a, a mosaic of, like you said, psychology, sociology, anthropology, political science, history. You know, it's, it's already a kaleidoscope. But here, because of the way the program is structured, you're able to make it what you need it to be. I think that the most successful students at ICAR are people who are self-starters who um, are interested in um, trying to make something of the program as, as, as much as they want to make it. Mm -hmm. That's not really, we're going to have to edit this part out. Yeah. Um, I think that the most successful ICAR students are people who are self-starters, 
who are interested in um, taking, um, taking as much as they can from the program and really immersing themselves in it to the greatest extent possible and taking advantage of all the knowledge that's here, all the faculty, the other students who are an amazing resource, and the opportunities to participate in activities across Washington, D.C., which is a great place to be if you're interested in conflict resolution. It might not seem that way with the politics that we have here, but there's so many organizations doing amazing work here. So, you know, ICAR is, starts off being a terrific kernel, a, a great place to start. Then you can just add to it and build on it and really, you know, create a multifaceted experience for yourself. I completely agree. I think it's almost like a think tank in and of, of itself. That's a really good way of putting it. Yeah. Okay, well thank you so much for meeting with us and sharing your stories. Thank you so much for having me.